Welcome to all of you astrology friends. Welcome to another reading with me, Virla, Astro Virla. And this one is about the full moon in Aries. Every year around this time of the year, we have a full moon in Aries. And it's going to happen around and about the 17th of October. So very soon we're going to have this full moon. And it will be at 24 degrees of Aries, so which means like the moon will be at 24 degrees of Aries, the sun will be at 24 degrees in its opposition of Libra. So that's a full moon. In this video, I'm going to explain what is this all about, what is the flavor, what is the ingredients of this full moon. And for each and every sign, I'm just going to look at the area of life where this is happening and where the ruler which is Mars in this case, Mars is the ruler of Aries, where that ruler is situated in your chart as well. So we can see where this is going to play out. So first of all, normally it's one, I mean, normally it's one of my favorite full moons because it's a, a fresh, it represents a fresh start. It represents a culmination of things that we initiated and we're seeing the first you could say the first results of that, because don't forget full moons are always about culminations, things that come to fruition, things that are conscious, that are brought to the light, things that are very much in the face. And especially with Aries, because Aries doesn't like sneakiness. It's very blunt. It's very open and direct. You know, that is, you know, for better or for worse, it's just a characteristic of Aries. So for all of us, this is definitely a time of being, the, you know, the good stuff of Aries. Let's start with that, which is being courageous, which is uh, going through the barrier of fear and doing it anyway, being active, working on our future in an enthusiastic way and in a very, very fiery, positive way, almost like a child, you know. It's the child of the zodiac because it has that flavor of the initial start, that raw energy that we all need to start something. Now, the intention, of course, always with Mars is important uh, so that we think about what we are starting. Now, this particular, and of course, the sun is in Libra. So this is about relationships as well. This is about the... You could say the paradox between I want to be free, I want to do my own thing, Aries, I want to be, you know, I don't care what other people think, I'm doing it anyways, it's my way or the highway, I go for it on my own, I want to be the first, and Libra is about, but what about others, what about other people, what about connection, so you see that is that opposition between Libra and Aries and we all have that in our lives that we are trying to between these two energies finding the balance between connection but also between individuality which is what Aries is all about it's about individuality you know people with a strong Aries emphasis like the sun in Aries uh, an ascendant in Aries, a Venus, Mars, or like me, a moon in Aries, they are strong, um, how would I say, strong egos or individuals, you know, they, they love to do things on their own and they're very super focused and they want to get there soon, uh, you know, rather yesterday than today or tomorrow. That's Aries, you know, it's very impatient. It wants to get things done rather yesterday. Now, what is happening around the time of the 17th of October during this full moon? Because yes, okay, we are trying to, you know, finding the balance between our individuality and connection. We are, we can use this energy to start something new and to accomplish something or to accomplish something that we've been started on. And we're seeing the first glimpse of it. And it's something that we pioneer because Aries is about new stuff. It's pioneering. It's not thinking. It's very much in the present, you know, like children, right? They are very much in the present, not thinking. They're not being nostalgic and not thinking of the future. They're very much in the now. So what we can do uh, there is very important. Now, is it an easy full moon in Aries? Absolutely not. It's a very, very challenging one. But that means... 
often uh, that we are up to something and that we're very close to growth. And I'll tell you why. The most important aspect uh, I find is Chiron. Chiron, this full moon is very close to Chiron. So it's Chiron conjunct. It's not, you know, the moon is at 24. I think Chiron is a couple degrees. I don't think I know. It's a couple of degrees earlier, like 19, 20, 21, that kind of energy where Chiron is. So it's next to this full moon. What does that mean? Chiron is the wounded healer. It is our wounds. So it is somewhere in our charts. We all have it natally. So we all are wounded, you could say. And um, when it's in Aries, it's the wound of existence. It's the wound of I'm taking space here. It's the wound of, hey, I am. I am and I'm here and I'm someone to uh, take into account. You know, that kind of energy. People who have um, Chiron and Aries, they have that wound of um, it's sometimes they're even shy that um, because when they're in the spotlight, the wound comes up again. So with that full moon, there's going to be some pain also connected with it when it comes to expressing who you are and when it comes to your existence and owning your space. It's really about that. It's entering a room that you don't know that is unfamiliar, and you're entering a room with, hey, I exist, and I'm allowed to take space. It's my birthright. It's that kind of energy. I know it's very raw. It's very simple, but it is like that. So wounds like that are going to come up, and especially in relationships. Hey, hey, I, I'm, I'm something, and especially, you know, moon and Aries, when that person, you, feel like other people don't uh, don't uh, you know take you for granted or they they don't consider you then this wound is really really going to flare up and it's all about it it's a bit like moon with chiron is a bit like moon and saturn but it's deeper the wound is deeper it's almost shame of hey i'm here and that wound it can be, you know, opened, so to speak, but for a reason to go through that pain and to heal. So it's a very daring energy here that we have, um, a bit of explosive as well. Why? Because moon and Aries, uh, it takes everything personal. It takes everything personal. Moon and Aries is very emotional, but fiery, emotional, reactive. It reacts <clears throat> promptly because it's driven by emotion. So the ruler, the moon is in the sign of Mars. You can see it like that. And Mars, guess where it is? It is in Cancer. We call that in astrology. So the moon is in the sign of Mars and Mars is in the sign of the moon. We call that, how do, uh, how do I say the term in English? I think it is reciprocity or something like that. You know, if someone knows what I'm talking about, please um, do it in the comments. I thank you for that reciprocity or something like that. You know, it's like the moon is working in favor of Mars and Mars is working in favor of the moon. I don't care where those planets are situated in a bad way or in a good way. You could say Mars in, in Cancer is bad. Um, I, I don't believe in those terms, bad and good. I believe in the soul that chooses to do good or wrong, period. But anyway, that's another video. Now this, um, so these two planets, they are working together. The moon is working for, the, for Mars and Mars is working for the moon. This is like when you have the right intention. This is phenomenal. This is very good energy because what is the key of this video? The key of this video is, and I'm not there yet because I, I haven't talked about Pluto yet, but I want to, say already the key if if you remember one line out of this whole video it's this line it's so transformative energy and if you go through the pain and through the barrier of pain there will be lots of lots of lots of healing and fresh starts and upgrades so to speak because when you go through something that is painful and you go through it you become stronger and that's what Aries is all about. Strength as well. 
and it doesn't bother you that much anymore and it's not you're got, you're not going to take it personal anymore so that's what we're dealing with so it's not only this very chiron kind of energy that is super super sensitive energy i mean moon in aries is a bit of a sensitivity because it flares up so easily and especially when it's ruler Mars is in also the very emotional sign. So these two are going to work together. That's why I'm going to have a look in uh, when I talk about the 12 signs, not only where the moon is, but also where Mars is, because they, they work together. They work together. But in a good way, in a, if you want to use this energy in a way of growth, of um, soul's growth, my goodness me, you can mobilize this energy and you can do a lot driven by emotions and transform them into more authenticity in your life more realness in your life more soul's purpose why because if it's not enough yet this is all these this constellation of the sun and the moon in an opposition it is squared by pluto and it is also squared by mars what we call in astrology a full t square uh, no a full square, not a T-square, that's half, but a full square in the cardinal signs. I'll explain. The sun will be at 24 degrees of Libra, opposite the moon, which is a full moon, at 24 degrees of Aries, cardinal sign. It's going to square up to Mars in 22 degrees of Cancer, which is again cardinal sign. And it's also going to square up to 29 degrees of, of, um, of Pluto. <laughs> of Capricorn, where Pluto is. So very martial, platonic. Wow, it's like, it's um, in a bad way, it's war. In a good way, it's complete transformation, going through pain and getting out of it way stronger. So let's choose for the good side, right? Um, so a lot of energy. Absolutely, a lot of fiery energy and platonic energy is definitely also energy that wants to unravel that toxic energy and not unravel, but, you know, bringing it to the surface, put it in your face, so to speak. It's the shadow, you know, and it's not to annoy you that it's doing that. It's to get rid of it, to, to um, go through that process and to deal with it once and for all. So a lot of stuff is going to come up that we have been buried. Um, and that also demands a lot of energy. You know, you know those stories that if you want to hide something, it demands energy to hide it, doesn't it? And now it's that energy where it all can come up. And although that might not be the most beautiful thing, it kind of feels like refresh so Aries is very fresh energy and um, so yes where are we going to do that that's the question and the moon of course during that day a bit before bit and a bit after it's gonna the moon will first when it's in Aries at 22 degrees it will square Mars moon square Mars so it begins with some sort of an explosion and a boom this is obvious here it's obvious with aries it's obvious you know the difference of mars in uh, or a venus in aries for for instance versus a venus in scorpio a venus in aries woman i exaggerate here a little bit a venus in, in aries woman is going to show her you know what she's got she's going to show it she's going to wear short uh um skirts and show her her legs and uh, it's very much in the face, you know, red lips and so on. A Venus in Scorpio, so for her aim is very direct, you know, look, I, I'm here. Hey, don't you see me? It's very prompt. It's very direct. Venus in Scorpio, also driven by Mars, by the way, is very more, it's, it's a bit more sneaky. That woman could wear dark colors. Um, <laughs> this is a very... Uh, Scorpio kind of color, Bordeaux, or how do you say that? Um, black, and sh maybe she's going to wear um, clothes that are very tight, but not revealing everything. So she's going to let you guess, but also her aim will be like, hey, 
and powerful here, you know, and showing her sexuality in that way. Why am I explaining this? Because the, I want to explain the, the rawness and the boldness and no messing around. It's what you see is what you get with Moon in Aries. It's absolutely like that. And some people like that and other people don't because it's so honest. You know, honesty is very much uh, important for people with Moon in Aries. And, um, but so, like with everything, right? You know, in certain situations, sometimes it's not good to react. It's good to wait and see. But with this energy, it will not be possible. Okay. So that moon is going to square Mars first at 22 degrees. Then it's going to oppose the sun at 24 degrees of Libra. And then it's going to square Pluto at 29 of uh, Capricorn. Oh, my goodness me. And the sun squares Pluto as well. So it's like uh, 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 it bumps into all these squares. And when we see that, which we call a full square in the um, cardinal signs, it means that we change. It means circumstances that prompt you, that force you towards change. And not just circumstances. It's also an opposition. So it's also people. And um, but afterwards, afterwards, a couple of days after that, Mars will try Neptune, Mars will sextine Uranus. So we see in the sky that after this day, like the 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st of October, we see gentleness, we see understanding, empathy, newness with Mars square Uranus, liberation, but also those. Um, Mars trying Neptune, I always think of the impact and people who do something for the collective, not for their own, for themselves, but they feel already satisfied and they feel good and they can give very easily to others, but not in a way that they're a doormat. You know, it's that kind of energy. So I'm convinced that this is, well, it's always happening for a reason. This is always happening for you know, it has to happen as it happens. But um, so this is an energy that is very volatile, absolutely, but is very necessary. Let's put it that way, necessary. So we can, of course, close our eyes for this and say, oh, I'm not seeing this. I'm just hiding. And um, but we can go on the right and evolve in that way. So let's have a look because I don't want to, I, I want to be a true, you know, very honoring the Aries energy, which is, let's do it fast, but real and to the point. Aries, for Aries, this full moon, the whole intro is for you. I'm not going to repeat because this is about you. This is about your connections. So the first house, the seventh house, especially if you have planets, around 24 degrees of Aries, who you're going to feel it is between you and other people, but it's also Mars there in your fourth house, opposing Pluto in the 10th house. It's also your career, your home. The key areas of your life are being put upside down. So it's all about you. You might be, be really um, uh, defending yourself and saying, hey, this is what I am and this is who I am. And it considers, because Mars is in your fourth house, it considers home. It considers home. It considers literally your home, but also your emotional well-being or parents. Parents could be parents as well that you have to kind of um, show them who you are, basically, and um, kind of make things clear. Taurians, this is happening in your 12th house. This full moon, so there is something bubbling up from the unconscious that uh, the 12th house is the house where we put all the stuff that we don't want to see. We put, um, and when that stuff is a lot, uh, it's going to be brought up. And in what area of life, this Mars, the ruler of that, is in your third house, probably in your communication. Either you are going to communicate something that you kind of say to yourself, where did that came from? Or the other way around, other people could um, kind of attack you in a way. Uh, um, I mean, with their words, and um, you don't know where this is coming from. So you will have to deal with that kind of energy. Um, 
can be related to work as well. You know, the sun is in the sixth house and Pluto is in the ninth house. It's about the things that you believe in. But most important is these things that you hide for yourself, don't put your head in the sand <coughs> any longer. Okay, so that you can communicate this, that you can work through this and that you can, um, you know, this could be with siblings, with neighbors as well, but not necessary, but that that's represented by the third house. There could be an email, for instance, that comes into your e-box and it's like, oh, what's happening here? But it's all for the better. It's all for that healing that I was talking about. Gemini's, this is happening in your 11th house. So Gemini, sextiles, Aries. So for you, it's a rather nice energy. And the sun also trines your energy. So don't worry too much about this energy in a good way. It's definitely something coming to the light when it comes towards a friend. So a friend or um, uh, a group associations, you might be doing something in a group and, and initiate and the ruler of it, Mars, is in your second house. So you could be doing, for instance, workshops. And you're get, it's a new thing, you know, and you're afraid of it. Remember, Aries, new pioneering energy. Oh, this light is just... Uh, but I'll uh, get, you know, I hope it's, it's on camera, not too bad. But anyway, this is not about the looks, is it? I mean, Aries is not about the looks at all. It's about what you want to say, what you want to do. For Geminides, there's definitely something, maybe a new goal or something that you always wanted to do and now it comes to fruition and it brings you confidence in a way and money, which is a good thing. So it's a rather good, uh, it's actually not rather, it's a good energy for you, okay? We have all those squares happening um, and uh, so that second house there is also opposed by Pluto in the eighth. So there is there are some power struggles if you are in a, in a connection. But main thing is focus on that goal, the 11th house, or that group of people where you want to be a part of or not want to be a part of. You know, that balance between, I want to be a part of people that are like-minded, but I also want to do my own thing. Cancerians, very important time for you. You are a cardinal sign. You're going to feel this hugely. So very tense energy for you, especially if you have planets around 24 degrees of Cancer. This is happening in your 10th house. So it could be starting something that comes to fruition or um, when it considers your work, your career, or your family, a parent, um, or your social status. There's change there. There is... Um, with social status, I mean from being married to being divorced, from the divorce to getting to live together again, you know, status shifts. Um, so there is a lot happening for you. It's like your whole world can be put upside down because remember, Mars is in your sign and it poses Pluto. You have a lot of um, powerful uh, people that seem to work against you, but what they're doing is showing you how powerful you are and how strong you've got to be to attain what you want to attain and how not you can work with control or manipulation. Not allowing it from others, but also not expressing it yourself. I've been talking about that in the monthly horoscopes. So very, very important and um, very volatile energy. But Mars in your sign, Mars in the first is... Um, you want to do, you want to do new things. You want to do things that are, that you are driven by. And uh, you don't want to be kept in those hidden energies. And uh, it's a good time to express that, to show this, but it will be with a turnaround, right? Because this is like um, the healing energy that we're seeing here. And you heal through your work almost. So the focus can be on uh, career that you want to express yourself through. Leos, this is a rather good energy, although, you know, with the squares and whatnot, it is not always the, the best energy. But with um, the Leo and Aries are fire signs, so it's in your ninth house. There can be something that comes to fruition that has to do with learning, teaching, traveling. So something that comes to fruition too. And the truth is shown here, 
And um, it's also what you believe in versus what other people believe in. There could be a bit of a um, energy clash uh, happening there. But the ruler of this Mars is in your 12th house. So be careful that you're not undermining yourself. That's the only thing. If not, do something for, and you feel good about yourself and you feel good about, um, you could say with a good intention, you can uh, work behind the scenes, sort something out and uh, work on that. But on another level, you can also do something for people who are uh, in, in need. And, um, but the tension is definitely there where your mindset is and your state of mind, right? Where, what you believe in. So that could be like something is healing there because you have a different perspective. Virgos, your eighth house. So this is deep. Um, this is quite the house of life and death, so to speak. And um, the ruler of all of this is in the 11th house, uh, Mars. So that could be friendships, groups of people, Something is is changing here, transforming. Um, something is not going to be the same anymore. And that's for the better. Also with goals. There could be a goal, it's not working, it's um, not for you, or a goal that is working and that you need a lot of effort to do. Could be that as well. But main thing is in that 11th house of... Um, Sorry, in that eighth house of, you could say, life and death and deep psychological insights, that there is a transformation taking place for you, that you go through the barrier of fear, literally, and imaginative fears, you can tackle them. It also has, can have to do with assets and with in investments that in a positive way, that because of the hard work you've done on yourself and on your confidence and on investments that now it comes to fruition and uh, there is this shift and and there is this goal that you always wanted that you are achieving Librans very important for you especially if you do have planets around 24 degrees of libra you will feel it it's your relationships for sure so there's something whether you are single or not there's something showing up for you uh, in relationships, even if you are single, there's someone there that's catching your eye that is showing you something about your attitude of relationships. And um, because the ruler of that is in the 10th house, it could have to do with work as well, or someone at work, or a boss that you are um, fighting with, so to speak, and you're fighting for, you know, you have to take that balance. Uh, between your individuality and and what you want to achieve, which is important. That could lead to endings of um, jobs and new ones, establishing uh, of new jobs as well. So all, all key areas of your life, like you, others, work, home, they can go through this transformation and things can really pop up so that you can tackle them for once and for all. Scorpios, this is in your sixth house, this full moon. So something comes very becomes very clear in the work, day routines, your lifestyle. There could be something popping up here um, from the 12th house where the sun is into that sixth house uh, that you want to change and that you want to transform. Mars is in the ninth house, by the way, the ruler of this full moon. So this is about your belief system. So there could be a change in belief system. And because of that, it changes your work. It changes your routines. Let's hope that you're doing this for a better routine, for a better lifestyle. So you could be doing something according to that and achieve a lot about that. Because remember Scorpio, the ancient ruler of Scorpio is Mars. The new one is Pluto. So you're feeling this tremendously, but it's your cup of tea. You know that we need these times every now and then to make those changes. And those changes for you are in the lifestyle area, the daily routines. And so if you wanna change them, do it. If you wanna have that new job, do it, make some actions, write those letters and get into action. Sagittarians, you're one of the signs 
that is a fellow fire sign, which is very nice. Although this is full of squares, this is better for you, just like um, the Leo. So this is fairly good for you. It's in your fifth house, which is the house of fun. So something might come up that has to do with changes, uh, that has to do with, you know, your heart chakra, so to speak, that you really want to show off there and that you really want to do what you want to do. You know, whether it is um, whether it is reflected in your child, if you have them, they can be going through a phase of huge transformation, going through pains and, and therefore making this huge uh, change there and new starts and whatnot. Or it can be you that um, because Mars, the ruler of this is in the eight houses transformation. So it could also mean that because of psychological um, shadow work that you've been doing, uh, like not running away from the shadow, but looking it into the eye and transforming. And that gives you that sense of freedom and that sense that, yeah, I demand here that I can have joy in my life. That's the house of joy, the fifth house. So doing things that you enjoy a lot and that you're claiming that energy. Very beautiful. And it opposes to the 11th house. Yes, of course. This can go against what your friends want and what your friends are, are what, what they know you for. So there could be a bit of uh, trying to bring that into balance again. Capricorn is very important for you. You are a fellow cardinal sign. So when you have planets around 24 degrees of Capricorn, you're going to feel this very strongly. But all of you Capricorns feel this because... It's in all areas of your life. The biggest thing is this moon is in your fourth house. So this is about literally your home, your but also your emotions and parents. So it's your family. It's about your ancestry. Uh, something might come up. Mars is in the seven. So it can be triggered by your spouse or girlfriend, boyfriend. If you don't, if you're single, someone could be there catching your eye and you're very, you know, you cannot just do nothing. It's about actions, you and the other, right? Because Pluto is, of course, still in your sign now. So um, you've got the power. Uh, you've got a lot of power available to you. Use it right. Uh, watch the horoscope of um, October, November, uh, where I talk a lot about this. So for you, it's definitely changes in the home. It's definitely also to make your home more your own and to become more your own parent and uh, not projecting it on a partner, um, you know, like old daddy issues or old mummy issues that you're projecting this on a partner with all the consequences. This is a very healing time for you, for sure. Aquarians, this is happening in your third house. And, the third, and, and Aquarius goes well with Libra. It goes well with, um, uh, with Aries as well. So notwithstanding all these squares, this is fairly good energy. And the third house is something comes up in that third house that is changing. Um, the third house represents your communication. So you can have an email or you saying something that is really changing your lifestyle, your life, your day-to-day -day life, your routines, your health, your work, because Mars is in the sixth house. Third house is also siblings and neighbors, so there could be changes happening there. But all in all, um, things that come to light, that it's a lot about your communication, that you, you have not been able to communicate or others haven't been able to communicate to you. And that could be, although it might be a bit... Uh, shocking for you because it was hidden for such a long time, but it can be very healing. And especially um, you can work hard to fix what needs to be fixed uh, in your daily life from, you know, things that are literally broken. The sixth house is also your work and your health to improve that and work actively towards that. Pisceans, this is happening in your uh, second house. So this is the house of belongings and this is the house of money. So something can come up that is about your state of um, <laughs> the state of independence. So that, um, Donna Summer, you know that song? It makes me think of that. It's a lot about your worth and it's a lot about, hey, I own this and this is my talent because the second house is also your talent, your assets. 
And there is like something that shifts. The ruler of it is in the fifth. So it has to do as well with how you express yourself, what you love, what you love to do. Could be also your children. And um, you fighting with, with your children to, you know, because you want to, around money, second and the fifth house. So you could be fighting with kids around money. So you're standing your ground with Mars in the second house. And it's healing because it's about how you view, view you and how you put the bar of your conserving the self, so to speak. So this is very important. The assets of you versus other people, your kids. Uh, if you don't have kids, this has the, this might have to do with a business that you want to start up and there's like tension around money. So be, but uh, it's a lot about the drive that you want to do, the intention that you want to do and knowing your worth, right? So if you want to start, for instance, a Reiki, Reiki business and you don't want to ask money for people, it's not going to work, right? So it's about owning your worth asking that money it gives tension but you're healing whilst you're doing that anyway this was only an example but um very important for you to heal around self-love around existence and ownership anyway having said that thank you so much for watching and see you next time bye bye